What up, Wolves? Blade Master here, back with the uh, second part of my uh, Shock Cavalry series. And uh, in the previous one, we I, I took Gedai, and my opponent took um, Carthage, and we were talking about the strengths of Noble Horse. And in this one, I've taken Gedai, but my opponent, who's uh, Danko, has taken uh, Parthia, so we all know what <laughs> what Shock Cavalry we're talking about in this game. I've taken three Bow Horsemen here. He's taken a couple of Parthian Horsemen uh, in response. I've gone with a different army from last time, uh, both spear and uh, uh, sword heavy, but I haven't taken any uh, melee cavalry or shock cavalry. So why fight fire with fire is my uh, reasoning. I mean, why take spear horsemen, why take noble horse, uh, when those guys, when Parthian cavalry are just going to be so much better in every respect. I've taken armored spears, uh, I think I've taken four armored spears on my flanks and uh, two noble spears yeah two noble spears up in the center and a couple of uh, noble swords as well two falksmen behind them and uh, one spear uh, dacian spears unit uh, i've gone very skirmish heavy i brought four dacian heavy bowmen and a couple of dacian heavy skirmishers on the flanks and the dacian heavy skirmishers will be crucial in uh, if they can get some sh volleys off on his uh, uh, cataphracts then they could actually prove to be uh, quite useful Dacian heavy bowmen were only brought because I thought he would bring a lot of Parthian foot archers. Let's see what he has brought though. A very weird build. Uh, three mercenary hoplites on his uh, on his right and three mercenary or sorry three Persian hoplites on his left. He's gone with a total of six cataphracts, two eastern cat, four eastern cat, no five eastern cataphracts. Yeah, three over here, two over here, and one royal cataphract gen, and only a couple of Parthian foot archers. Now there's this general dogfight going be going on between his horse archers and mine. Uh, it just boils down to who can uh, micro their uh, horse archers better. Uh, these horse archer and horse archer battles always comes down to who can micro their uh, archers better. Again, you don't want to put heavy shot or something like that, something stupid like that on uh, early on in the game. Especially when you're going to fight up against these guys. You want that range advantage and uh, extra armored piercing is not going to affect the battle at all. So always use regular shot and uh, you just need to, with practice I guess, people will uh, get it like how to uh, fire and then retreat uh, close enough, or sorry, uh, soon enough for your enemy's arrows not to land on you. I'm no master by any means. Uh, Dank was actually much better at, uh, much better than me in, the, in this respect, which is why I'm pulling off and pulling away with my bow horsemen so that I can induce him to just start firing on my armored spears instead and let him waste his ammo there. And I'll use my uh, bow horsemen and uh, try to attack his uh, eastern archer or eastern cataphracts or something instead. I'm advancing with my troops, which is uh, obviously, uh, which would be favorable to me. I mean, he's got six hoplites, which is good. I've got, I think, six uh, spears as well, but my spears obviously outmatch his. I think my uh, armored spears would probably lose to his mercenary hoplites, but I've got uh, great swords also, so they can be very useful, on top of having a pretty decent skirmish line. So let's keep forwarding. I mean, this could be, this could get a bit tedious. Uh, I'm just going to, it's, he's kiting back with his army which is obviously a smart move, he doesn't want to engage uh, my troops until and uh, unless and until like he's uh, got a pretty distinct advantage among the bow horsemen. But I'm going to keep moving, I'm going to move slowly because I don't want to, uh, you know, waste stamina in trying to chase off after his troops. He's going to use this time to get some shots off on my mercenary foxmen whom we all know are very uh, susceptible to horse archers. I was. I just turned around with my Dacian heavies to, you know, try and get a volley off, cheeky volley. Uh, it's not going to be the case. He's cutting back again. Let's, let's keep forwarding a little bit more. Yeah, I think he's he's still keeping on getting shots. Yeah, they're all the way down to 85 men from 120, and their their morale has gone down a bit. But um, yeah, it's not yet done. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, it's just a standoff. Oh, what I'm doing here is I'm just going to turn around and move my uh, bow horseman over here. Just completely like not care about his uh, bow horseman. I'm again moving in front. I think this is going to be the last time that I move up in front before he uh, decides to, you know, not stop kiting. Again, I mean, I'm not. I don't. Uh, it, it, kiting is obviously not a uh, not something wrong. Like I mean, it's it's actually a very favorable tactic and smart move by him. Now, this is exactly what I wanted to sh uh, talk to you guys about in this video. Um, he's going to do a pretty similar strategy that, uh, like what I did in, the, uh, in part 1, except he's going to do it against spears. Now, my spears are pretty well braced. I didn't brace them at the last second. This is a stupid move. I moved around with them, which is very unnecessary. 
but he is going to charge into noble spears and I really wondered like how it, that wasn't really a smart move in my opinion because I turned on cavalry counter tactics as well and now what he's going to do is he's going to retreat back and now he's going to move in with his Persian Hoplites which is that is a very smart move now it won't give me the uh, it's the effect is twofold actually uh, he charges into my uh, line forces me to turn on cavalry counter tactics and then retreats back before it can actually take effect uh, he's charging into my noble swords here, which is obviously going to do much, uh, which is going to do wonders for him. Uh, my Dacian heavy bowmen are killing off his Parthian Farachis really quickly. Uh, Dacian heavy bowmen have quick reload, which is a huge boost in their favor, but it's still, they're not very cost-effective units. Dacian heavy skirmishers should be getting a lot of kills here, but it's going to be wasted on his Persian, his Persian uh, Hoplites. We can see he's got, only got four casualties on his Eastern Cataphracts, uh, his, uh, but they've got a lot of kills on the other hand, 32 kills. Um, and now they're charging into my uh, noble swords, which is again, uh, that's a much better uh, option for them. But what I wanted to tell you guys about, what I wanted to talk to you guys about was, he's charging into my spears. Now with, uh, with most cavalry, that's not a good idea. But with cavalry that's as strong as Eastern Cataphracts, charging into armored spears at the very least is actually a good idea. And that's for one huge reason. Their base morale and base morale of these uh, of mid-tier um, units, spear units, is 55, which isn't great. It's it's okay, but it's not great at all. So if you can get a charge in on some with some really really strong uh, shock cap like these guys, you actually have a chance of killing enough troops that you can um, you, you can cause a pretty severe morale penalty. Maybe coupling that with uh, fire arrows, a flaming shot could be something very interesting, and that's something I would definitely like to see. I'd probably uh, try and. Uh, use that sometime um, But he's getting some charges on my noble swords now now that his cataphracts have got their first charge They're still at uh, they're still fresh which is a smart move because uh, he could have easily put uh, uh, Trample and that would have been a pretty suicidal move if he, if he did that because uh, You know a cataphract which is exhausted and charges into a unit is basically as good as you know not charging anyone at all Because uh, the stamina just plays such a huge part in their effectiveness now his Persian Hoplites is immediately put into uh, Hoplite, or uh, sorry, uh, Square, and his per his mercenary Hoplites on the other hand are going to be put into uh, Phalanx. He's killed off my spears who chased off after his Parthian Farages but didn't do a great job at it. And now he's going to come in for some pretty devastating um, uh, hammer and anvil charges on my armored spears. Again, they, like what I was uh, talking to you guys about, they don't have great morale. They have very good melee stats, but besides that, you know, their morale is that one chink of their armor. Um, which your opponent can definitely make uh, use of, if, especially if he's got strong ass cataphracts like these guys. Let's turn it back on to full speed and watch this carnage. My Dacian heavy bowmen are going to be uh, shooting into these guys while they are. Uh, well, that was kind of uh, anticlimactic, but the the damage has been done. You know that ca cataphract charge was really deadly on the uh, at least on the morale side, uh, and caused them to get an immediate shatter. Now my Dacian heavy bowmen have done pretty decently. Uh, Dacian Heavy Skirmishers, unfortunately, I think I, I forgot to take them off of Skirmish Mode. Uh, these are just one of the few units that you definitely never want to take out of Skirmish Mode because, um, uh, or never want to turn on Skirmish Mode for because they're just so good at melee and now this is that stupid morale shock. Uh, man, that's just frustrating to see uh, <laughs> in retrospect. These Dacian Heavy Bowmen are doing okay, they're starting to get some kills on these Persian Hoplites. But what the, the key thing to note is that he's completely, um, you know, he stopped my, my main line from trying to chase off after his cataphracts. He's reduced the amount of micro he needs to do by, do, by uh, just pushing his hoplites up in front and engaging them. And now his, uh, on, on his uh, right flank or on my left flank, he's just getting some sweet uh, hammer and anvil charges. And again, that's that uh, morale penalty that's coming into play. Uh, when you're going to get, a, you know, a lot of kills at one instant, that itself is going to cause a morale penalty. On top of that, if you're going to get a rear charge, uh, then it's going to cause a, you know, a succession of morale penalties, which is going to just shatter any troop, with even, which even has like 55 morale, which isn't uh, bad, but it isn't great either. Armored spears are chasing off after these uh, uh, eastern cataphracts, and uh, they have bogged some of them down. And that's because while he was chasing uh, off after them, I just uh, issued attack orders to for them to stop engaging those Persian Hoplites and instead attack his Eastern Kadas. But all in all, it doesn't look like it's going to go in my favor. I'm just turning on shield wall a bit too late uh, in every instance possible. And meanwhile, his Parthian Furaches, who came back from routing, initially I killed I killed off a lot of them with my Dacian Heavy Bows. But they came back from routing and now they're going to be pretty decisive. You can see they're starting to rack up the kills. And um, just those charges themselves, even if they, like, 
even if they wouldn't kill off uh, a unit to like 20 men the fact that from 120 you can bring them down to like 80 or 70 uh, within a matter of seconds just that huge number of kills in such a short span of time will cause enough of a morale penalty to kill off a lot of or to drought a lot of units so that's why i think uh, using flaming shot along with the charge is not something that uh, i've seen many people do i think it's it, that uh, type of fear effect would probably work a lot uh, work pretty well uh, he's mopping up the rest of my troops again this is a very unexpected army uh, i was expecting a lot more uh, uh, parthian foot archers and that's why i didn't bring any cav um, i don't think cav would have really suited me in any case he's just outclassed me in this match uh, my uh, his uh, eastern caras just did brilliantly 308 kills on one of them his royal caras didn't really even play into the game too much but you know you can see just 162 kills with hardly any casualties uh, he did really well and i think that's a decisive uh, crushing defeat it should be it should be classified as a crushing defeat my noble spears are at, still at 80 men uh, and they're going to take forever to die so i'm just going to put it on yeah costly enemy what costly enemy victory it should be at least a, a close defeat or something anyways guys uh, yeah i hope you understood like you know what the uh, point of this video was uh, again you can doing uh, a frontal charge on spear troops as long as you have really strong uh, cavalry like shock cavalry like uh, hellenic cataphracts eastern cataphracts uh, royal cataphracts uh, maybe even ptolemaic cav i would i would even hazard a guess as ptolemaic cav and maybe a gima cavalry if you can use some elite tier shock cavalry like them and uh, get some devastating charges off and then immediately retreat them back and then uh, uh, then that could be a pretty useful tactic um, it lowers the hp of your uh, of your enemy's units a lot and uh, you know in general it's, it's just a good uh, ability to have like i said in the previous video you can you can charge them in and then retreat in, retreat them back and basically just rest them uh, until like mid game and you can again use them to get some uh, hammer and anvil charges and the difference is that this time they will be fresh and uh, we all know stamina plays a huge role in uh, the effectiveness of a charge anyways guys that's the end of this battle hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more peace